Okay, so first things first, let's get all the gear and all the equipment out here, lay out our pieces, and uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of all the tools that I will be using. So, get our two by fours laid out. Eight foot. Six foot. And the six foot. first build I did, I bought 50 inch by 16 foot cattle panels. Now upon purchase, I had this cut down to 12 foot. So 12 foot is going to be our hoop span from side to side. And then the remaining four feet from each panel will serve as the framing for our ends. Now you'll remember at 96 inches, a standard eight foot two by four is a few inches short of what we need because we need a total of 100 inches. So we're going to cut our 2x4s at 6 foot, 3 inches, and then screw them onto the far end of the 8 foot 2x4s, therefore giving ourselves um, 99 inches from end to end, which will leave just a little bit of wiggle room on the far ends for the cattle pen. So I'm going to cut those 6 foot 2x4s, or the 8 foot 2x4s down to 6 foot 3 inches and screw those on our 2x4s now. So we're going to measure out 75 inches. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut our gussets really quick. These gussets will be used in all four corners. and get these gussets in. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, two and a half inch screws. Now I can come in this way with one and come from the outside with the other. is go ahead and measure from end to end find my center point and insert this and screw in this uh, middle support from the outside so right at 49 and a half should be our center point all right so put that about in the middle so now we come to the cattle panel portion of this we're going to use two cattle panels 50 inches wide cut to 12 feet basically from this outer rod measure in one and a half inches and simply cut out that little plug that will allow this panel to fit over this outer framing of two by four all right so now i'm going to go ahead and take these pieces and fit them in over the edge here Go ahead and do the same thing again. All right, time to get the zip ties out. So now, what I need to do is go ahead and get um, get these panels lined up and zip tie them through the middle. It's very important when doing this that you're making sure you get these lined up 
very straight and very precise. And also make sure that your ridges are running on the same way. So one's not on the inside, one's not on the outside. Definitely want to make sure to take your time and get this part right. So everything lines up nice for the rest of the project. Alright, so I am changing up my design a little bit. Initially, I cut this at 48 inches straight, brought it up through there, and then ran a cross section through these, and I had it exposed on the outside. Well, it's a little bit cumbersome. I had to mess around with it a little bit, but here's what I came up with. I took my 2x4, and I put it behind this lip here, stood it up, and then traced where the edge of this is, and cut it along that line. And I just basically traced this, cut it, and then when you took this other board and flipped it over, it was within half an inch or so, so I just hold this piece up a slight bit. I take a 2x4 this way, uh, the measurement I have is 42 and a half inches. So I'm going to cut 42 and a half inches lengthwise and cut this angle to match and then screw this all together and then I'll be able to secure it over the top here with some hot with some hog staples. See how that will fit in here. Pretty good. So I'm going to get one screw in here. If you have some wood clamps, this would be a good time to use those. So now I'm on the back side. I've taken a 4x4 four four instead this time. Measured 47 inches and a 48 degree angle this way. So you can take the whole 2x4, put it in here, and again, trace along this cage line if you wish, and that'll give you a, uh, a, a template to follow. Okay, so now the first step get our measurement. We have 36 inches wide, right on the money, by 42 and a half. So my exterior dimensions is going to be 35 by 41 and a half. Now we have two two by fours that are three and a half inches uh, each. So that's seven inches. So we need to subtract seven from 41 and a half. 34 and a half, so two cuts at 34 and a half. Number one, actually there's the only doorway. Or no, doorway number one is the doorway. I just wanted to add some reinforcements, so I put more additional gussets on the back end just to make sure this thing is really rigid and it's not gonna flex or start to sag. Mount the hinges on one side and then I'll have to put some shims underneath, make my measurements, get everything squared and secure in the door frame. As At the same time as I'm doing that, I'm going to take one of my cattle panels that is left and I'm going to go ahead and cut this baby to fit onto this doorway so it's nice and secure. Make sure you get yourself a sturdy enough set of hinges. Something like these uh, these outdoor hinges should do just fine. Okay. Oh, get that baby stood up. Okay, Is that one perfect fit? I'm going to go with two and a half inch screws. Okay. I'm also going to go ahead and secure on my clasp here. Now this is the second uh, clasp and last that we're going to use. The hinge clasp with the twist so that you can lock it in and latch it closed. Get 
this one in here, try and get the screw in nice and straight. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and do a solid wall back here. Uh, I have my wife giving me some one by 12 select pine that I'll end up staining when I stain the rest of the frame here. And I'm going to add in some vertical supports here on the ends for this lower portion so that I have something to secure it into on the very ends. And I'll be able to tie the cage in with a couple hog staples or hog fence staples after I secure this. So I'm going to go ahead and put one on this end, one on this end, and then I'll run planks laterally up to here. So now that I've got these screwed in the bottom, so I'm going to find uh, somewhere on the cage here that I can nail into the 2x4s to secure these as well. I'm going to go ahead and start assembling and uh, zip tying up all the hardware cloth that will go around the perimeter and up over the hoop to keep the predators out. I'm just getting it in behind here. When getting the zip ties, make sure you're gonna get UV rated zip ties. They should be the black ones. I showed you how to frame the door. I showed you how to cut the cattle panel. After that, all you need to do is cut the hardware cloth to fit and zip tie it. And then do the same thing along the edges. Start from one end, curl it around the back end of the metal, and then run it this way, keeping it nice and taut, zip tying it as you work your way to the end. Once you get to this corner here, you can either do it in a separate piece or do like I did, essentially from this point up, once I had it hanging over, I cut and then was able to bend the mesh around this way, square up your edge this way, and you would have overlap hanging back this way. At that point, I just took my grinder and followed the edge of the metal and went ahead and cut that, joined the parts together and zip tied the seams, and then came back with the, with the grinder and kind of cleaned up the sharp pokey. All right, so here we are with the finished unit. I've showed you how to frame it how to span your cattle panels, how to frame your ends, build your door, run your hardware cloth, and that brings us to the canvas covering. I'm going to use a 12 by 10 foot canvas. The 12 foot length will go from side to side. The 10 foot length will actually get the underneath to go ahead and give yourself about six feet of coverage, leaving about two feet exposed. Start on one end, get this taut and straight and lined up. Then you're going to come to this back end and curl the canvas under and you're going to use some kind of wood, whether it be strips of plywood cut down like I use, and you're going to set it over the canvas and screw through the wood through the canvas into the bottom framing and that will produce a nice tight and secure clamping effect. Obviously the name of the game is surface area in this. You want to have as much of this canvas screwed and clamped to ensure that it's secure. Coming to the back of the Hoop House 2.0, you'll see a great difference in this back wall. And the reason is, is this is a purpose-built unit for our layer girls. And I wanted this back wall to be completely enclosed along with the newer, improved heavy-duty canvas. I wanted a nice, sturdy, protected area back here where their layer box is in. Now, thank you, Cece. Thank you, honey. So you'll see here that because this unit's for our girls, I have built in an access layer, and this is the brooder box, or the laying box that I've made. I've got four stalls, and for 14 birds, it seems to be quite plenty, especially since three or four birds all prefer to use the same stall to lay their eggs in. And so this box itself is made out of outdoor treated lumber. These back panels are actually one by 12 pine. It's been raining for three days, and you'll see the gap is closed a little bit. So I'm going to have to go ahead after this and widen up these gaps just a hair so that it's still secure, but that it has room to expand and contract. Look at that. A delicious, freshly laid egg. This is actually one of the um, rainbow eggs from our Americanas. 
Yes, I know. We've got four layer boxes that I mentioned before. I had to stuff some stuff up here, even after putting some of those prickly pads that are meant to keep the birds off. They kept coming up here, and that's a problem because they're pooping up there, and it's not an easy way to clean it. But we have four layer boxes. We have a perch right off the layer box. I've got another perch bar here below, and I'm probably gonna add another one or so for them. Now the water obviously here, I'm able to hang from the bucket. We're utilizing a bucket with two cups in here, but in here they've got plenty of space. They got room to spread their wings. They got room to jump up and jump down. Easy access in the back for the egg. Thank you so much for joining me as I walked you through building Hoop House 2.0. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That like tells the YouTube algorithm that it's a good video that should be shared with other people who are interested in the same thing. And until we meet again, keep learning, keep growing, and keep at it.